One of the benefits of using a struct uh, component with you, or even just in React, is it's a little bit more obvious uh, the lifecycle methods that you can use. Um, in something like React, you use something like use effect, uh, which we also have here in U for when the component is created, when it's updated, and when it's being destroyed. But that's a single method that handles all three of those events. Uh, sometimes you might want to just break those out just for simplicity. And in a struct component, uh, we have access to those separately. Uh, so the way we have access to them is in the impl. So let's come over here. We have our impl struct hello. And uh, we're now, the required ones are the create and view. So those are essentially the lifecycle methods that are absolutely necessary. But if I um, if I use Rust Analyzer to implement the deep the default members, uh, we see a few more here. So we have update. Now the update lifecycle method is going to run every time that state is updated. Or um, uh, we can actually come in and check that here. So update in lifecycle methods. So this oh it's it's um. Uh, it's whenever a message is updated, which is uh, imp a slight differentiation, um, but uh, it, it's good to know. We'll be going into messages in the next video. And then we have changed here. With changed, um, these are, they've received new properties, and so therefore they need to re-render. Um, but with both update and change, you notice that they're returning booleans. Uh, that's because these booleans are telling uh, you whether or not to actually do the re-render. So you can receive an update or a change and say, yeah, this is interesting, but there's no need to re-render right now, so I'm going to return a false in this instance. Or maybe nothing really changed um, and you don't need to do a re-render, but you do like an internal state calculation and you want it to update. So therefore, you return true in that case. So you get a little bit of control over the rendering process at this case, you know, in, the, in this case. Um, it is possible, of course, using this to accidentally create an infinite loop, which is um, suboptimal, let's say. Um, we also have rendered here. So these uh, rendered and destroyed don't return anything. There's nothing that we can do to you know make it render again. Uh, rendered is basically just, hey, something rendered, they'll tell us whether or not it was the first time it rendered. Um, and uh, do you want to do anything at all? Like update internal state. Uh, then we have destroy. So hey, the component is being destroyed, it's being um, shut down, all memory and everything else is going to be uh, collected and um, handled. Uh, do you want to do anything? Uh, if, if we've set any kind of um, timers up or anything else that we, you know, that would maybe just be sitting there running constantly, we would want to clean those up at this point in time. Uh, to be honest, I rarely use these three. Change, rendered, and destroyed, I, I don't I don't really find a use for. However, if I'm doing anything that needs any kind of um, interaction between the HTML and my internal state, uh, update is used quite often. But we'll be getting into that and these messages in the next video. For this one, we just wanted to take a look at what these life cycles were, how to access them, and just what they did. Uh, thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video. Bye.